because at the end of the day, it's not about what we can do. It's not about what they can do. It's about giving something for the client. That's just absolutely extraordinary and, and is world-class. And in order to achieve that, it's going to require everybody's, you know, best foot forward. Episode 405. Hello and welcome to the Business of Architecture. I'm your host, Ryan Willard, and this week I'm speaking with Sam Cavett and Ryan Brown, a father and son duo of the extraordinary Paradise Theatre, which are a full-service firm specialising in providing comprehensive luxury private cinema design, and they're based out of Los Angeles and Hawaii. Sam also spearheads the wonderful publication Cinema Connoisseur, which is a digital publication and initiative aimed to build a community of enthusiasts, both professional and public, to embrace and enhance the world of private cinema and film. In this episode, we discuss how the business has evolved from custom integrator to full-on private theatre designer, and how they went about building a team and clientele in an industry that was just getting started, and how they nurture their relationships with their clients and collaborators in order to deliver a compelling private cinema experience. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Sam Cavett and Ryan Brown. This podcast is produced by Business of Architecture, a leading business consultancy for architects and design professionals. This episode is sponsored by Smart Practice, Business of Architecture's flagship program to help you structure your firm for freedom, fulfillment, and financial profit. If you want access for our free training on how to do this, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you want to speak directly to one of our advisors about how he might be able to help you, please follow the link in the information. Sam and Ryan, welcome to the business of architecture. How are you both? Doing great. Doing great. Excellent. Oh. Yeah, thanks now, for having us. My pleasure. Very excited to be talking to you both. Now, Sam, you are based out in Hawaii and Ryan, you are in Los Angeles. Uh, Sam, you are the, the founder of Paradise Theatre, one of the most extraordinary um, private cinema um, designers in the world with just an incredible portfolio of work. And you've really been responsible for kind of creating this industry. Um, Ryan is your, your son. Ryan came into the, into the business uh, many moons ago and has been working as one of the, the, the main sort of managing director and is really leading the ship. Uh, and I'm really excited to hear about well, your, your plans for the future. And, and to start off with, how did the business, how did it come about? So maybe Sam, that's the, you're the best person to answer that one to begin with. It's, it's, always, it's almost like that, that phrase that you say, you can't get here from there or can't get there from here type of thing. Because um, I discovered private cinema back then. It was called home theater. In the early 90s, home theater as a as a business at all actually started somewhere around the late 80s. I think somebody said 1987, there was a demonstration at one of the uh, uh, home electronic shows that they used the term home theater. So really, it's it started about then. And, and uh, um, I was uh, uh, exiting the music industry from a, a career where I wasn't getting to go where I really wanted to go with that. Um, wanting to have a little bit more of a stable career, you know, do something a little bit more normal. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got into the uh, uh, luxury design sales uh, side of things. I've always liked nice things and got into selling uh, high end um, uh, interior design and construction related uh, interior products and uh, discovered uh, home theater through a client. And I, I had helped him with a number of things for their custom homes. And he said, I should have you uh, represent my product. And I said, what, what's your product? He said, uh, uh, acoustic home theaters. It was like a moment of silence. I said, what's that? He said, well, it was like recording studio design for watching movies. Another moment of silence. And uh, it was like a homecoming because at that point, it, it just all clicked together because it was all about creating cool things, experiencing cool things. Uh, it just it just fit so well. Uh, got into the business with that uh, that company, and at one point I realized that uh, um, you know our, our objectives split off, and I, I started my own my own thing. And and uh, you know it was funny because back then 
home theater was so new, mm. uh, even though it was so so small compared to what we could do now that we had five channels and two of them were not real channels. Mm. Now we've got, you know, up to a 64 channels and 128 speakers we could put in somebody's theater. But back then it was five and plus a subwoofer. And, uh, and, you know, yeah, you, you could only have a certain size of screen. It was so limited, but the excitement was over the top. The clients were asking for us to do everything we could do. And, and, and there was a, a high level of excitement about it. So pretty heady days when that whole home theater uh, industry started. Um, and uh, yeah, that's how, that's how I got into it. It's like I said, how do you, how do you get there? Because there wasn't even a destination at the time. It's yeah. uh, we, we, we wanted to do home theater design and, and nobody even knew what that was. And we were kind of making it up as we went along. So. So, pretty, so, pretty fun stuff. So in those early days, then, what kind of person was interested in this? And, and how did you take a, a service or a product to market where there, you know, where it was a pretty unknown thing that you were producing, if you like? Well, actually, the, the movie industry did us a favor because you'd go to the movies and and you'd watch a a, a a Lucasfilm and the, and at the beginning of the movies, you'd have the, the THX logo come up and the big sound boom, and the, and the phrase, the audience is listening and people would go, Oh, that's, Whoa, I want that. And so they would, th there was a, there was a, a desire for, for it. And then the whole home theater, um, uh, segment was so new people were talking about it and it was out there in the public airwaves so um, people that had the the wherewithal to to dedicate a room and that's what we did even from the beginning we dedicated home theater spaces um, uh, we call them private cinemas now because there's confusion as to what a home theater really is but mm -hmm. but um, people would they wanted it and so uh people were building a house or a lot of times people would come to us and say I'd, I'd, I'd like to turn my attic into a home theater or i'd like to turn my basement into a home theater or kick the kids out and send them to school we want to take their bedrooms and turn them into home theaters all that stuff and and uh and so they would they would seek out home theater specialists now the problem was is that and it's not a problem. They would go to the AV companies and the AV companies were getting into that and so forth. But, but uh, what was, and I consider myself fortunate to have entered the uh, industry from the position I did, because as a musician, especially as a percussionist, acoustics was always something that um, affected everything I did. Every time I went into a different place to play, mm. I had to really pay attention to the acoustics of the room and how I would approach it and so forth. So got a feel for that and looked into it um, and under understood it to a degree to realize how important it was. So we approached it from the standpoint of we we're going to design the room. Um, and uh, and actually, in the very beginning, we went to all of the integrators in our area. Uh, back then, they didn't even call them integrators. They called AV dealers or, or hi-fi companies, whatever the case may be, and said, we'd like to work with you guys and design the rooms that you put your equipment in. And they said, we don't need that. Just put the equipment in the room. And so... We, we actually ended up having to start our own AV company. And at the, in the industry, when I started, we were designers and an AV company. And actually, that's where I realized I didn't want to be an AV company. I wanted to be a home theater designer and work with the integrators and work with them because of the, my core competency and what interested me and so forth so but but there was all that that uh, how can i call it evolution of the industry from the very beginning um and uh, i believe that uh we were very fortunate or yeah we were fortunate back then we was just me but that that i came from that perspective yeah. and saw the value of that and and just stayed stayed pretty uh consistent to that being um what our core competency was and what we were going to provide uh, in the equation, which is still true to this day. That, that, that's quite a, a, a sophisticated innovation, if you like, because, you know, what you've taken there is obviously there's the, there's the product, there's the kind of technical components of, of speakers. And actually you recognize that there was a need. And this is again, like you were saying from your musical ear, 
there's there's a need to curate these this technology in a way that's actually you know the way that those the grand opera spaces or the or the romantic cinemas of the past have been curated where they're actually being able to create an ambience and there's there's something more and i can very much understand from a technician's point of view who's working in the details of of a of a of a speaker that that would be lost or that kind of you know the the environment or the overall experience would not be something they would be putting their focus on right very interesting and yeah. so how do you then begin to build a team in an industry that is getting started because obviously you know how do you find people with the right experience how do you well it, it was it was interesting because um in the beginning, I was just happy to design theaters, and make a living at it. Uh, frankly, that was that was good enough. And um, at, at some point, uh, the industry, I, I was able to create a bit of a reputation for designing over the top theaters and, and uh, was fortunate enough to win a couple of awards and this and that. And then uh, the, the industry association, <clears throat> excuse me, asked me to uh, develop and teach some classes about how to design home theaters. Uh, and, and, uh, and so I got involved in that. Um, and, uh, it was, it was very good because I, I was able to, um, you know, we learned a lot when we first got into this industry as an industry, what we knew about designing a small room, which is even your largest home theater is considered a small room from an acoustical standpoint. Um, there was a lot of the, of the science that wasn't well understood yet because most of the development of those sciences were done in, in large auditoriums and other venues than in a small room and so forth. A lot of things that were done in small rooms were done by, um, uh, I don't know how you'd say it, uh, uh, um, anecdotal kind of understandings rather than having developed it. So we were able to be part of that learning curve and the industry did a really good job with that. But um, at, at some point I realized that um, my mission was in, um, in, in creating things that were extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And, and it, it's like, um, just had to ha come up to a realization that that's who I was uh, from the beginning. Uh, and, and uh, you know, trying to uh, uh, not do it that way just didn't fit for me. So at some point I um, decided that, uh, that I wanted to um, focus on that, what we call luxury side of things and, uh, and build a team uh, in order to, to, to do that. So um, uh, we, we, we uh, going through that process. I actually, Ryan is the first member of our team and uh, he, he joined the, the company through, um, through uh, uh, it was very fortunate because we were also involved in consulting in the industry on another side of things, the business, running your business as a, as a AV company and so mm. forth. And I just happened to get good at that through having my, my AV company in the beginning. So I was doing that and designing theaters, kind of wearing two hats and Ryan had just uh, graduated from a business school and, and, uh, and uh, he came and did some consulting with me on the side and he did a really good job. So I, I didn't let him go anywhere else. <laughs> I said, Hey, um, why don't you join up and let's do this thing right? And Ryan has actually taken taken the business to a very um, a very uh, great degree, much more than I ever could have. Uh, and and uh, I let him talk about that a little bit himself. But but through his 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 help, we were able to to dis determine what we needed to bring on engineers. Mm -hmm. CAD designers and so forth, and um, and actually, uh, Ryan helped me be able to convey what I knew into a, uh, a, 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 a repository of what we've learned is called mm -hmm. institutional knowledge. So that now the company knows what I know, or what even they know more than I know. The company has grown to that point, but we were able to to duplicate and then improve upon what I was able to do with it with with what's now a team. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, yeah. It it sounds like it went pretty fast, but that was over quite a few years that we 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 um, we 
we did went through those growth steps. Great. Um, perhaps, perhaps right. Ryan, you you could um, tell us a little bit about because obviously you're from a, a business background. Um, mm-hmm. What what some of the first things you started to do when you joined Sam in the company, and and, and also the the you know you've got the lovely dynamic of being father and son, which right. which brings its own unique challenges and benefits obviously yes. advantages yeah yeah well you know um you know i've been really fortunate to have had uh sam as uh, a mentor and you know as somebody who's taught me a lot about business has taught me a lot about you know a lot of things um but i could say you know all along you know growing up you know uh through our uh family relationship and and through our business relationship you know he's really one who focuses on um putting our best foot forward and really doing the best we can. Um, and, you know, that's really carried forward through how we've developed and grown Paradise Theater. Um, you know, two of our core values are excellence always and ever better. And, you know, that's that's really grown from, you know, what, you know, Sam has always sort of, um, you know, taught the team and taught me and sort of really like um, coached us along to like, hey, you know, good enough is not good enough. But, you know, we need to push the envelope. We need to you know, we need to explore things that are not easy. We need to explore things that are maybe difficult or uncomfortable to do, but it's going to be best for the client. And it's going to be, it's going to make sure that this, this, this private cinema is, you know, what, you know, we want to, what we want to deliver. And, and, and so I think, um, you know, taking that as we, as we've grown the business, you know, we're a family business started as a family business, you know, we've really grown, I'd say, you know, we're very conservative. We've grown very conservatively over the years. Um, you know, I've been with Sam in the business since 2003. Mm. Uh, so, oh boy. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we... Went on 20 years. <laughs> please. Um, yeah. So, uh. you know, we, we've grown very conservatively. And, 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 and we, we've done that because, you know, our reputation and our clients and, and the relationships that we have are very important to us. And so we've always grown in a manner of, you know, we're expanding our capabilities. We're expanding, you know, our ability to do a better job, but, but not for the sake of, Hey, we're going to grow and just take advantage of as much market share as we can. It's, you know, we've, we've really grown in a way that's allowed us to be the best version of paradise theater that we can be. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the type of clientele that you deal with. Obviously a, a, a private cinema is, as Sam was saying, it's a luxury good. It's a luxury. It's a it's a high end um, solution, or it's a high end service. Mm-hmm. And the sorts of spaces that you're creating, like they can't be anything else but extraordinary. And they need to have that kind of high level of of finish and quality and delivery all the way throughout. How do you take something like this to market, and how do you get access to that kind of um, pool of high net worth individuals? Mm -hmm. You know, um, relationships are a huge part of everything we do. Um, You know, and we've, you know, as we've, you know, grown over the years and as we've, you know, expanded our network and, you know, made um, some very good, very strong long-term relationships with with, uh, people and companies who are, you know, working for our mutual clientele, Um, you know, through this network, you know, we get a lot of, we're we're very much referral-based. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're working for, you know, our clients are, you know, generally ultra high net worth individuals. You know, these are true luxury connoisseurs. These are people who, you know, not, not, not like a pop culture luxury. I mean, these are real connoisseurs and have very, you know, are very discerning. And, and so, you know, we've, we've built our process to really um, ensure that we hit a home run every time because that's the expectation. D- just, know, to, act- just to give a little bit of context, what 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 yeah. sort of costs investments are we talking about in terms of like you know the construction value of one of the private cinemas? What what sorts of money are people spending on? It? Um, you know, our clients are building you know some of the world's most extraordinary real estate. So, um, you know the 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 budget for one of our rooms, you know, they range, you know, um, probably on the on the low side, probably you know, maybe like 500 to 750,000, um, on the high side, you know, three to 5 million. Yeah. Amazing. Right. So that, so that, that's in and, in and of itself is a, you know, a large construction. That's the price of a house in many cases. Right. Or a car. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so we truly are, you know, we are, we are implementing for our clients, 
you know, the very highest performance, you know, most luxurious private cinemas in the world. Fantastic. So yep. in, in, in terms of nurturing those relationships with clients and ensuring that you're able to continuously be delivering on what, what sorts of, how do you deal with them? How, what, what sorts of specialist um, ways of communicating or ways of handling that kinds of clients? How do you, how do you nurture them? How do you handle them? Um, it's all about the team. And when we're working with our clients, it, you know, it's all about the team and it's all about the collaboration. So it's, you know, there's many stakeholders that work together to deliver excellence. So, you know, we work very closely with the project architects, the interior designers, uh, the contractors, you know, generally our clients have, you know, um, representatives um, who are working with on, on their behalf uh, mm -hmm. many times, um, you know, and when we are afforded the opportunity to, you know, engage with our clients and really get um, specific direct feedback, you know, we take every opportunity uh, to do that. And, and, you know, cause you know, having an opportunity to really glean um, that information just allows us to do the best job we can. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it truly is about the team. It's a team effort and there's no way we could pull off what we pull off without, you know, a really excellent team. You know, everybody, you know, the, there's the system integrator who's, you know, really pulling off all the technology and there's, you know, the architect and the interior designer, the contractor, you know, just everybody that we work with on these projects are, are really top notch. And I think um, we have, we're afforded this opportunity to work with the world's best at what they're doing. So yeah. everyone is bringing their A game. Everyone's hitting a home run. And, you know, I just, I feel really fortunate to be able to do that, you know, not only, you know, in Los Angeles or California, but, you know, all across the world. Um, you know, we have, you know, in any given day, we might have a Zoom call with our client in the Middle East or, you know, maybe somebody who's 50 miles away. Um, but, you know, we're, we are working with the world's best at what they do. So, so how do you typically prefer to be involved in a project? Is it the, the case that you're directly communicating and liaising with the end user and they kind of find out about you and pull you into a project? Or is it more common that and like other architects or other, other parts of the design team recognize that there's a gap and they recommend your services or they pull you in? How does it, is there any one way that you prefer or what's the mm -hmm. best way if you like? Yeah. You know, um, we were brought in, we're introduced to projects from many channels um, through relationships that we have, you know, people we've worked with before, you know, some of our clients will refer us to their friends, um, architects, you know, that we've worked with before and how to have had a pleasant experience working with us, you know, will will introduce us to their clients. Um, you know, the, I, you know, for me, you know, if we're introduced to a project and, and we're working with a team that's going to allow us to do our best work, mm -hmm. you know, that's really, that's really what matters. Um, having access to the client at some point is very important. Um, you know, when we're, if we, in some cases, we might be three or four people removed from, you know, a particular client, you know, the higher the net worth, usually the greater the distance is between sort of the people who are doing the work for them and, and actually talking to the client. Mm -hmm. Um, but when we are able to, you know, even if it's for 15 or 20 minutes, you know, just, just let them talk. And we just ask very open-ended questions because we just want to absorb. Mm -hmm. And it, it just allows us to get these very intimate, um, details about their life that allow us to do our best work for them because a private cinema is a very personal thing. And we want to make sure that, you know, they're able to, you know, spend their time, which is, you know, which is really their most finite, you know, resource that, you know, regardless of how much money uh, or wealth you've accumulated, you know, we all have the same amount of time left. And, you know, generally our clients, their time is very precious. And we feel that in a private cinema, we're able to give them some, like a really valuable asset to maximize that time when they're able to enjoy it with their family or their friends. Are you working with a lot of industry professionals? So people who are either in the music industry, entertainment industry, and whose kind of level of discernment of quality, particularly with an acoustic uh, environment is somewhat heightened. And how do you sort of distinguish between how, how does a, how are people looking for quality? I guess, how are mm -hmm. the client, how are the, how are the clients assessing the quality of what it is that you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes um, we do, we do do a lot of work for, you know, let's call it industry um, people, um, you know, just being, having, uh, you know, being located in the proximity of, you know, Hollywood 
you know, there are a lot of people, you know, building homes, extraordinary homes uh, with, you know, great private cinemas. And these are people who, you know, become used to, you know, doing private screenings and spending a lot of time at the studios. And so they really want to have that experience at home, you know, and we, and, and we feel, you know, lucky, fortunate to have the opportunity to work with them and, you know, really deliver that experience at home when they have a chance to really just kind of unwind and be with their family and have those special moments. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as, um, you know, as far as, as far as exploring the opportunities with a client and really help and really being able to identify like levels of performance, because it's, it's kind of a, like, it's kind of a subjective thing. It's, it's not like, do you want a black car or a white car? Do you want like the big engine or the small engine? You know, this, it's, it's, it's something that people aren't really able to, you know, sort of like assign a value to. Yeah. So in some cases, you know, we really try to explore like what sorts of experiences they've had before, um, you know, and really try to like dig into that and just see like, what did you enjoy about that? You know, what, what did you not enjoy about that? You know, in some cases, our clients are coming to us and they, you know, they've never had, you know, a really high performance listening experience. They've never had, you know, a private cinema experience, but they want it. They, you know, they, they really like desire it. And so, you know, they might trust us to, you know, make recommendations for them or to um, help steer them in the right direction based on questions that we might ask to sort of explore what they're looking for and find out what's important to them. Um, You know, other times, you know, like, you know, we, we, we really try to have our clients experience some things. So we, we have, you know, various places we can bring them, you know, maybe it's a project we finished before or maybe. Maybe it's a demonstration room somewhere else. Um, But, you know, getting, having the ability to have that experience, you know, generally opens their eyes to the opportunities that Mm -hmm. are available. And it's something that they want more of. Could you explain a little bit about who is involved in your team in terms of production and where your service begins and where it ends? Because you're not fabricators. Mm-hmm. You're not, you're, you're not, you're not involved in the construction of it. Like, you know, you, you, there's not a workshop where you're building stuff as such. Right. Right. So we made a decision a long time ago to be hyper-focused on private cinema design and engineering. Right. And, and not to be a company who um, sells and installs the audio visual, not to be a company who's building the theater because we want to focus on our, our core competency. We want to, and we want to work with people who are at the, the, the top tip top, like best of their game. And we truly believe that no, no one can be everything to everybody. Nobody can be the best at everything. And so we, we assemble, you know, teams of specialists that are able to deliver things at the absolute highest level. So, um, as far as the team that we have, you know, we're very much, um, organized like an architectural firm. Um, so we have, you know, architecturally trained designers, we have uh, acoustic engineers, we have a mechanical engineer, we have project managers who are, you know, managing our projects as they move forward and working with the teams to coordinate, um, coordinate drawings with interior designers and architects. Uh, We do have a full-time interior designer on staff as well, Mm -hmm. um, you know, along with CAD, CAD drafters. And so, you know, we have a very well-rounded team that is able to execute on the process that we've defined And that we've developed over the past, you know, Sam's been doing this for quite a while. I've been doing this for quite a while, but we are, um, we're very, our process is what makes us. And that's what gives us the ability to reproduce results at the highest levels and not just get lucky sometimes. And so we're, we're hyper-focused on following the process, but you know, our process is designed in a way that's flexible because we are doing ultra custom design and engineering and it has to be flexible. Um, but it's in a way that where we can, we can meet our performance specifications and we can have these, um, objective measurements that allow us to know how well we're doing or how well we're not doing, um, from a performance standpoint. Um, so, so by, by following that process, we're, we're really able to maximize the effectiveness of our team and, and really achieve results, um, regularly, you know, and, and that's the consistency is really the key. How do you collaborate then with, with other designers, either the interior designers or the architects on a project? And is there ever a kind of, you know, I mean, I know I speak with lots of architects all the time and it's not uncommon for architects to think that they can design everything and anything. And then it's not, that's not always the case. How do you um, work in inside of that? Or is there a kind of, 
you know, a, a project vision that an architect has set out or the interior designer has set out that, that you're now needing to work in alignment with or how does that negotiation work when it works successfully and and mm-hmm. and what sorts of challenges do you do you often come up against mm-hmm. you know i think um we have always um worked very hard to be very collaborative team members mm-hmm. and we've always worked very hard to uh, recognize that this is a team effort and so you know when we're working with a designer or we're working with an architect um, it's very important to us that, you know, you know, we're, we don't have big egos, you know, we're not coming in saying, oh, hey, like, this is our show, this is our room, you know, we're gonna, you're gonna do it our way or, or, you know, we're leaving or whatnot. But, um, you know, this is, a, this is a team effort. And, and, and so we respect that very much. And so like, there is there, I don't see it as like a start stop, like, here's where you stop. And here's where we start. You know, we, um, usually we start by explaining our process and explaining that, you know, and I like to share like our documentation, uh, which is very, very extensive and very, very detailed. So we just like to show like, here's what we're planning to provide. Here's our process so that they can understand that it's a collaborative process and we're working very closely with them because, you know, depending on like when we're brought into the project, if we're brought in early, you know, that's a, it, the collaboration is very much m- more smooth. Whereas if we're brought in very late and everybody's very committed to certain things, then, you know, like things that we may want to ask for might be more difficult to achieve, or it might be stepping on somebody's toes that, on something that they're very like, you know, emotionally attached to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we, um, you know, we're working with, you know, some of the greatest architects and interior designers in the world, and we would be fools not to leverage their skills and their expertise and, and, and because at the end of the day, it's not about what we can do. It's not about what they can do. It's about giving something for the client. That's just absolutely extraordinary and, yeah. and is world-class. And in order to achieve that, it's going to require everybody's, you know, best foot forward. What Ryan just said is, is a very important uh, piece of this. Uh, he said a couple of things. One of them is the process is designed. It's not just arbitrarily designed. It's a learned process that, mm. that is based on the uh, relationships of tasks and interdependencies that give us the ability to reliably deliver excellence, not based on luck, not based on got it right this time, but we know what has to follow what in order to get the job, the results done right. And we check ourselves based on, um, on true criteria. Uh, it's not subject to opinion, it, either the room meets a certain criteria or it doesn't meet a certain criteria. And our responsibility is to let the client know when something does or does not meet the criteria. And then they could choose. It's, you know, we were just talking to the engineering before this meeting, I was having a meeting with the engineers and, and, and we, well, why, why would this choice be made? And well, the client wants it that way. And did we ask the client the question that this is going to compromise your experience in this room uh, you still want it that way. I mean, mm-hmm. you obviously, you ask it in, in, in an appropriate way, but but if if we don't allow the client, the um, uh, how, how can I call it, offer them the re- respect of allowing them to determine these things from an informed position, that's our job is to inform them. But our process, and then it's the same th- true with the, with the architects and designers, interior designers, and and even the integrators that we work with. Um, <clears throat> we're bringing our our knowledge and our skill and our experience to the table. Um, they all deserve our best. Mm. So you know, just to say yes because it's more convenient, that's not what we do. And like Ryan said, we're very collaborative, but we're also very communicative. Where we will tell a, an architect or designer privately and appropriately, here's where this is going to lead us into a, a problem down the road. And, and uh, you know, if your client, we complete a, a project that's going to be, you know, a, a two year time frame, that's got a huge amount of value much beyond the, the X amount of dollars that's being spent on this room. They spent two years or three years getting this house built and they've got all these expectations and then they come into the room and it doesn't perform. Mm. That would be a very poor uh, result. And it would be irresponsible for us to allow that to happen. So we work with our team members, the, the, the architects, the designers, the builders, all of those members to make sure that everyone's aware of what decisions, the impacts of decisions are going to be. So then we can go back to the client and say, 
we'd like to suggest this change because it's going to make your experience better. And my under my my experience through that is that the clients really appreciate it. It's their team is working together to bring them something that is is extraordinary. Mm. And um, and one of the things that's it's unique about our industry is that because we are, you know, I mean, 30 years ago, there wasn't a home theater industry. You know, there's been a yacht industry for a lot longer than that. How about cars? So people have kind of gone through this life cycle and there's an awareness in the public realm of things, you know, at all levels and that we're in the luxury level, but in all those other, other amenities that people bring into their lives for their joy and pleasure and so forth, there's an understanding of what it takes to get it right. You know, you, you drive a Bugatti off the lot, you're going to get a Bugatti, you know, (laughs) you know, so um, in our case, there's a lot of, home theaters that are not really, they may look nice on the outside, but they don't really deliver the experience that that's, that is possible mm. because of we're in this, in this um, transitional state, we're still evolving as an industry. And so it's real important for us to be, uh, um, what can I say, uh, d- uh, diligent to making sure that we're bringing the right thing to, to our clients. And so that, um, that as time goes by and the public becomes more aware, I mean, I mean, everybody knows what a home theater is, right? It's a screen and a bunch of speakers. The kids are playing video games. It's my home theater. Well, that's one flavor of it, but what we're providing for our clientele is much more, um, uh, elevating and much more excellent than that. And so we, we want to make sure that when we deliver it, that that's what they get. They get that, that, that level of excellence that is really mm. something that they could celebrate. So well, it, this is, this is really interesting because it's, you know, the, the what you're delivering is it's above you know, like a premium product, for example, it's, it is in that realm of, you know, of, of this, you know, Bugatti Ferrari type of quality and, mm-hmm. and, and level and accessibility as well. This is not, these are not, the, the things that just anybody can can afford right um what what are some of those challenges that you found as a business in being able to reliably deliver excellence because obviously when things go wrong or when it doesn't meet the exacting standards it's kind of like you can't not have it it needs to be right. corrected and then that and that immediately then means that there's going to be uh, diminishing margins and your, your profits are going to be chomped into because stuff needs to get done again. What, what are some of the challenges and how have you learned to mitigate them? Well, you know, there's a saying, um, you know, under promise and over deliver, um, that, that is, that is used out there. And I, I, it sounds really good, right? Mm. You know, if I do, tell somebody I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and I give them the whole alphabet, then what would they be delighted? I believe that we need to allow our, our market, our clients to set their own high expectations and set, you know, to aspire for the, that excellence. Um, and I think that um, it's, it's my own little mission in life is to, is to allow, is to, is to open the door to that, to people to, to be able to say, you know, I have a friend that, that talks about this. He's, he's a, 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 a kindred spirit in the industry. And he says, you know, every experience we have is, is a moment of our life and you don't get it back. So if, if I only get to watch uh, my movies once a week in my private cinema, frankly, it should make the private cinema even want to be better than the one that watches it seven days a week. Because that is something that is rare and something that should always be the best that it could possibly be. So, you know, instead of you know, our society seems to tend to say, let's do, let's do it quicker. Let's do it easier. Let's, you know, get by instead, you know, let's look at the fact that the moments of our life, we don't get them back. And especially in a, in a, something that's like a private cinema where we get to share those moments with people we love, our families, our friends, and so forth. And that's what it brings. So, so I believe that if we allow people to know what's possible 
and then they could put themselves in the position of knowing what's possible. Then they could decide, okay, that's possible. Is that for me, my family? And then if they say, yeah, it's not, that's fine. And, and we've got levels of performance that we can deliver. But if we say, I think you're only going to want this and decide that for them, then that's not really, you know, because it's easier to do to set those lower expectations and deliver a little bit better. Yeah. Why not set the bar high and over achieve that? And that's what we're capable of doing. And that's what our industry is capable of doing. And frankly, that's what, you know, the movie industry didn't get made famous by making small budget movies. It's the blockbuster that made that industry great. Well, the same thing is true about us. So, you know, I'll talk about it maybe a little bit later. I'll let Ryan talk again um, so that he could talk about the, 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 um, functional aspects of making this happen because this is a nice thing for me to say, but we got a team of, of people that have to make it come about. That's, that's mm. a, that's, that's a, a big task in itself. But, but all of that I said is about public awareness of what's possible yeah. and where that's what uh, we've created something that the, the, the uh, um, our, our publication and our, the community that we're trying to create to open up, an awareness in the public venue of what's possible in private cinema and why it's it, it it's something to be desired and something to be sought after, mm -hmm. like so many of the other what they call passion investments in people's lives, their cars, their art, their uh, uh, collections, and so forth. So, uh, so I, I I set a high goal, a high standard. We said uh, uh, deliver, promise high, and deliver. And I'll let Ryan talk about the huge task it is to deliver that excellence on a reliable, uh, repeatable basis. Yeah. Thanks for the easy one. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I do. No. <laughs> well, 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 perhaps you could start, start answering that question by distinguishing, for, for example, you know, you, you came into the business from a, with a business background and obviously saw a way of systematizing excellence. And, mm -hmm. so, and, and finding a way of putting in a process for repeatable excellence again and again. Um, what's your, how would you describe how you've, how you've done that? And perhaps what, how would you describe your role in the business as well compared to Sam's role? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, really, I mean, I think we've, we've really like more or less like organically built this process, but it, you know, over the years, but it's been very, you know, we've been very, um, attentive to it. And as we've grown, it's been increasingly important to have that process mm -hmm. because it's not just, you know, Sam and I, or Sam and I, and, you know, an engineer working together. Um, it's, you know, a, a host of people. Um, and so we have a, a very well-rounded team of specialists and everyone in our team is collaborating, diving in and out of a project, working together, you know, having excellence, always meetings where we're, you know, working together to figure out like, Hey, you know, are we all good with this? Is there anything that we should be thinking about here that can elevate this even further? You know, is there something maybe we're missing, but, you know, we're very meticulous about making sure that, you know, we're sort of doing the, our best work. Um, and so that process has really just developed and we, you know, we have um, worked with our team, you know, to solicit feedback, like, Hey, we're, we're, we're constantly iterating and improving. I mean, every day we show up here, you know, we really, you know, express this to the team is like, we should all be learning something new every day. We should, we should be looking for ways to improve. And, you know, especially with, you know, the kinds of projects we're doing, I mean, there's always something, there's always like, oh, you know, when you finish a project, there's always like, oh, wow, you know, we could have done that a little bit better. Or we could have, you know, there's this, like, we're, we're always just looking. And I think that that goes, you know, that's not unique in, in, you know, the peers that we have in our industry, you know, the mm -hmm. architects and designers and people we're working with on this level of project. And so everybody is really striving to be the best they can be. Um, so that's kind of how the process has been sort of um, continually, um, you know, I guess, evolved and curated. Um, you know, my role, um, you know, I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I'm working with, um, you know, new clients, I'm working with doing discoveries, I'm, I'm you know, doing a lot of networking with, you know, people that we work with quite a bit. Um, just, just, it, you know, make, really like building relationships and just curating relationships because our, our relationships are the most important thing we have, you know, mm -hmm. it's, 
and, you know, we're always trying to um, help someone else look good, you know, while, you know, working through a project and, you know, cause I think there's this mutual, you know um, you know, benefit and respect, but um, you know, I'm, so I'm, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of networking and working with, you know, new business um, and then I'm bringing projects in. So we're like doing a lot of discovery and, and intake and really figuring out how, and what direction we want to head with a project and, you know, just kind of learning as much as I can from the project team as we're kind of mm-hmm. getting involved. And then, you know, I'm introducing, um, doing kickoff meetings with our team and really getting everybody ramped up with what this project is all about and who we're working with. And we get all the files in and we build our 3d models and we, you know, that whole process begins, you know, and, and our team is very, um, very skilled at, um, working through our process. And then we have, you know, like I said earlier, these excellence always reviews that we do, you know, and I'm very heavily involved in those to kind of like come in and we check and we see how it's going and we make sure we're on track and, you know, I might have a few ideas and, you know, but we're, it's very collaborative. So like, you know, all of our key sort of managers, um, are involved in those meetings so that we can make sure from everybody's perspective, from like mm-hmm. a constructability perspective, from a, an engineering and performance perspective, from an interior design perspective, from an architecture standpoint, you know, everybody's kind of weighing in to see, should we adjust this? Or did you guys think about that? And it's just, it's a very, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's been a really great process that we've implemented that has just helped elevate it even further. So, so, I, so that's kind of like how I'm involved. And then, you know, at some point, you know, my brother, Kyle, um, you know, he's, he's at some point it kind of like transitions, um, you know, he's, he's really like, he's really responsible for managing the projects through the design pipeline and then through to completion. So I know, I know you asked earlier, we kind of got off track. I didn't answer, but we're, so our involvement is from very early in the project, generally like from very early in schematic design. Um, and, and we're involved through when the client's moving in and everything's being commissioned and we're, you know, doing audio calibration and we're really to- fine tuning the, the acoustics and the audio of the system um, and everywhere in between. So like when, when our design is finished and we begin construction, you know, Kyle's out there doing site visits with contractors. We're doing what we call performance verification. Uh, that's where we're like at incremental points throughout construction. We're verifying that things are being done, you know, according to our performance standards, you know, really not, not to like, catch somebody doing something wrong, but to make sure that the client's getting like the very best and that things don't proceed to a point where it can't be resolved. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's all about just getting it right and verifying that the performance potential can be achieved. Um, And then, you know, down to the very end, you know, like punch listing and really just, um, you know, walking the rooms and making sure that everything is just really done to the excellence that our clients demand. What, what, what are some of the ways or how do you maintain accountability and high levels of performance with the team on like on a human level, on a relationship level? Because mm-hmm. that's often something that's that can be very challenging in a business is, you know, particularly when mm-hmm. there's incredibly high standards that need to be met. Like mm-hmm. how do you in a gracious manner maintain standards and maintain morale and hold people accountable you know, I think we're fortunate to have a really great group of people um, who embrace, you know, our core values and embrace, you know, what we're trying to achieve. So, you know, um, you know, and, and I think some of that is learned through, you know, together, you know, as we've kind of evolved together, we have a great team, um, you know, but we have, um, we have, we, we, we try really hard to have a culture of, you um, uh, you know, like open communication and dialogue so that, you know, we don't, we want to have a, uh, we want to have a culture and, and, and a communication and dialogue where it's okay to get something wrong. It's okay to not be right. Um, mm-hmm. It's okay to have ideas. It's okay to um, disagree with somebody in a, in a, in a positive way. Um, and so, you know, this, this, I think, um, emphasis on, you know, excellence always and ever better. And some of these, you know, core values that we have, um, you know, helps foster, I guess, a, a, a culture where, you know, people are, are striving to make it better. Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes like, you know, sometimes people will come up with ideas and say, like, oh, uh, you know, that's, that's a pretty out there, you know, but wow, actually, now that I think about it, that actually makes sense, you know, and your first reaction is to say, oh no, you're crazy like that. We can't try to do that. But then it's like, you know what we should, because our clients want the best. That's yeah. what God is here. And we should, and we should at least give them the respect and, and ability to say no. And you know what? 
More often than not, we come up with some crazy idea and they say yes, because they want the best. They want things that are unique. They want things that aren't, aren't like everybody else. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's kind of a funny thing is just like pushing the envelope in ways where, where you're uncomfortable even presenting an idea to somebody because you're like, wow, this is really out there, you know? And then they're like, wow, that's cool. And you're like, oh, thank goodness, you know, <laughs> sigh of relief, like, wow, yes. And you go back and tell the team, you know, that the client's on board with it and everybody's like, you know, high-fiving and like really excited that we get to do something cool and different and better, you know? Um, and I think, you know, there's some fun in that, you know, that we're, we're, we are pushing boundaries. We are doing things that no one else is doing. And, and I think we're fortunate to have a team that like embraces that and like, and, and um, finds that to be, you know, fulfilling. Great. Yeah. And, and Sam, Sam, how does your, what is your role in the company nowadays? Well, my role is transitioning, um, but it's, there's two things that have been very gratifying to me in, in my business career. One, no, number one is having Ryan alongside and, you know, we're, we push each other because we're both pretty similar, but we're very different. So mm-hmm. we have, um, this dynamic and, um, you know, it's it, it, the, the word Ryan was trying for earlier was transparency. Mm. You know, we don't hide things from each other and our company culture is that way too. If we have an idea, we talk about it. And I have a phrase, I say, it's more important to get it right than to be right. And that includes me. I'm absolutely not above being wrong. People in my, our team, are free to say, no, nah, that's not going to work, Sam. Don't do that. You know, and, and, and because the most important thing is to get it right for the client. That's, mm-hmm. that's job one. And, um, and, but, you know, um, the vision of doing something extraordinary is, was a gift to me. Um, and, and I guess the only thing I could take credit for is I just went ahead and put one foot in front of another and Paradise Theater turned into something that's absolutely extraordinary, you know, almost in spite of myself. And then I've been fortunate following up Ryan with Ryan and then Kyle joined and then we bring in other people and they're just, you know, a great team and our, our core values of excellent. Well, first of all, we have one core value called experience non parel That's our job is to create an experience that can't be beat can't be even hardly matched. And then the the next core value under that is excellence. Always. That's our job. We're always going to be excellent. The next one is ever better. That means the job that we're working on right now will be the best work we've ever done. And that'll always be the case because we're never satisfied with ourselves and look and what we can do. We always want to take it to the very best level that's possible. And then our next value is, is, um, is, uh, uh, I always get confused if one if it's one or another, but the, the, the other two values are we are team paradise. So that's who we are. It's not Sam's company. It's not Sam and Ryan's company. Mm-hmm. It's we are team paradise because all of us are who make this happen. And it's real important that, that that's, that's our, our value. And I think it, 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 it is, so gratifying that that's the way it is. And it's not, a, it's, it's authentic. It's real. Um, and, you know, I just had a meeting with our engineering team just before this and it's, it was fun. Those guys are pushing me. I'm pushing them. We're having a good time talking about geek out stuff. Um, you know, and, and, you know, what's cool is it's going to make the next theater better. And that's who we are. We're team paradise. And, 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 uh, and then the next one is the, it's, it's almost like the capstone relationships matter. So, it doesn't matter whether it's my relationship with Ryan or Ryan's relationship with the team that he manages on a day-to-day basis. He's, he's like the hub, everything revolves around and, 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 and stuff with what he, he, he's just really has this um, uh, working so well. Um, But, you know, those relationships that he's forged with the team are, are powerful. And then it goes out from there relationships with our clients relationships with our collaboration partners, our architects we work with, our the contractors that we work with, those relations, every relationship matters. So, you know, we, we always want to t- tell the truth. We always want to do it right. We always want to 
the ethical, those, you know, it, and it just makes everything fit together really, really well. Mm. So to be here, you know, <laughs> guy that decided to design home theaters 30 years ago to have a, a company that is represented by that, like that is, is, it's, you know, there's just not words for it. It's extraordinary. It's a, you know, what a beautiful place to be. Mm. So now it's time for me to change and go away from, cause the company's got it. It doesn't need me to sit there and, and put my fingers in the, in the works and say, how's that gear working and stuff like that. Cause we, we have, we have a team of leaders, which is something that we've learned through um, a business of architecture really. We were doing it. I'm proud of us for being able to do it to a degree, but you guys showed us how to really, really lift up our team of leaders to that point. And, and they're, they're taking it very, very well. They're, they're taking awesome. the, the mantle really well. So now it's time for me to do something else. And that's evangelism. And that's to tell the values of what it is that we do to a, a larger market and to create a community. So, um, you know, it, it's funny when we did this transition, you know, we talked about, so the legacy of Sam is going to go forward with paradise. No, it's not the legacy of Sam. It's the legacy of paradise theater because it's the whole team that takes that forward. But now my role is to take that value and share it with the world. So um, I've created uh, a, a, an initiative to help us get the word out, um, you know, to the, the, to the audience the, and the audience is the, is the, um, the, the, the industry itself, mm -hmm. which I think has got a little bit of an identity crisis thinking we have to be, you know, we can't be this luxury, pristine excellence. We have to commo commoditize ourselves. So I'm here to say, commoditizing is fine. Price points are fine, but somebody has got to do the excellent. And if yeah. you're a person who, who is driven to have excellence, then somebody has got to be there to provide it. And if you're a person who is driven to provide excellence, there's certainly an audience that wants to receive that. So that's part of my message to the industry. And then there's another message is to the trades, the architects, the designers, uh, and the builders and the other people that are dealing in the construction business, because we absolutely are collaborating closely with that, that, that uh, community too. And it is that we're here as one of your peers to work with you and help you bring this amenity to your clients with no pain mm. or little pain and it you know, always takes challenge to get anything great done, but, but we're here and it's a, it's something that you don't want to shirk away from. You want to feel comfortable offering this to your clients, the, the, the audience. And then ultimately the other and the biggest audience that we're not really reaching very well at this point is what is a luxury private cinema to a individual who is a, um, a luxury uh, 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 pursuer, somebody who who has found in their station in life that having fine things is important to them mm -hmm. because they've worked hard. They're they're at a station in life that they want to always surround themselves with those things that lift them up. Um, I have one client that I always tell Ryan he's like the poster boy for 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 cinema connoisseurships because. And it's just a connoisseur of life. You know, you talk to him about anything. And if it's something that he enjoys, you can't stop. He was talking about um, skis. I don't even ski. And he had me on it. I wanted to go skiing after I heard him talking about ski. Ryan won't let me because I'll break my leg because <laughs> I, I don't know when to stop. But, you know, it's, it's, it's like a connoisseur of life. And we've got this thing, private cinema, that is such a great um amenity to people who want to enjoy life and that same individual um he was he was uh, 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 the subject of our cinema story and our of our cinema connoisseur publication our first edition and 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 i asked him why it was important to him to have things done well and excellence and he said it's about the beautiful shared experiences whether it's my car or 
a wakeboard or my private cinemas. He's got two of them. No, he's got three. We did two of them for him. And he, he says, it's when I get to share those experiences with people, it's elevating. It's, it's what, it, it's what I want to do. Mm. And so that message isn't getting shared very well publicly for private cinema, but that message is shared very well for other amenities, you know, art collections, or it's a well-known thing. There's uh, communities that talk about it amongst themselves. They don't have to go to an art dealer to find out about art. They can talk to other art and art connoisseurs. Well, so, that's so, what I'm, so my this, goal is. Right. And so this is very much the drive of what the, the cinema connoisseur is. Yes. And maybe yes. it's maybe it's a good segue there to, to yeah to explain a little bit about what the cinema connoisseur is like. What is it an initiative? Is it a publication? Is it a marketing device? Is it all you of those? You might say things? yes to all of the above, but um, you know it's it, it, it as we were deciding how I would transition and and move into a different role. Uh, we you know anybody that knows me that's shared a dinner with me in any of our business meetings and stuff like that will recognize the subject. Cause I, it's been something I've been dreaming about and talking about a long time, which is to create a community of connoisseurs that will build the awareness and advance the sector of private luxury, private cinema. Mm -hmm. So um, is that a direct marketing device for paradise theater? Yes and no, because we are absolutely one of the um, the top providers of the top private cinemas that in the in in the industry. That's what we've done. We've 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 done it, and we continue to do it. And that's who we are. Um, but there are others, and there's an industry. And my philosophy is that if the industry doesn't grow, then our business is not going to be where we want it to be as well. So, uh, you know, yeah, I I guess you might say I'm doing it partially for selfish reasons because I, I sure do want Paradise Theater to be the, as, as great a company as it could be. But I do know that uh, we've got to have peers. You could call them competitors, but I'll call them peers for us to have a successful industry. If it's not, if we're not going to have company in this, we're not going to, we're not going to have, have, have a business. We're not going to have people looking for what it is that we have to offer. So I, I think that the, the cinema connoisseur is going to build the industry um, up. And then subsequently that'll, that'll be great for us because we're go always going to be excellence always and ever better. So if we keep pushing ourselves to meet the demands of this ever expending industry, it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I said a lot, always do, but um, what we, we said, how do we get this started? I've been talking about and dreaming about, the community for a long time. So we said the best way to get it started is to create a publication and to, to, to tell this message in some entertaining and informative ways. And so that's what the cinema connoisseur publication is about is to tell, we've got some features that we're, we're doing a cinema story that is a, it, it is an individual's journey from one level of, enjoyment or expectation of a private cinema in the case of our our, our first story um we we ended up doing two private cinemas for a client and his expectations and his level of appreciation grew dramatically and some of our stories that will be coming about is is a client who has come to us has never had a private cinema mm. or a client that i had um a while back that we're going to do his story and and we, he had never had a private cinema but you know, as we were talking about, you know, he was talking to us and Ryan said, it's nice when we could talk to them directly. It really is. We're having a conversation and trying to get a feel for what he might want to do. And he was not sure how far he wanted to take it. And, 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 and I asked him if he liked to listen to music because we're talking about a movie theater, right? He says, music is my life. I mean, exact quote. And I said, really? I said, what kind of music do you like? And so he's my age. I'm sorry. He, he, he probably doesn't want people to know he's my age, but <laughs> we are the, of the same age. And, he, and, and, and so we listened to the same progressive rock and jazz back in the 80s and this, or in the late 70s and stuff. We're talking back and forth. And it's like, so he says, 
you know what? I want it to be a really great room for listening to music. So we ended up putting in some of the most extraordinary speakers that were made in his room. Um, and at the beginning, it wasn't going to be that way. It was just going to be a, a home theater. Mm. But he found that for himself. So, so his story is going to be, I want to, I want those stories to be out there for other people to read and say, you know what, music's my life too. Or the, the story of the client that he wanted a home theater because he always wanted a home theater, but his wife didn't care. Mm. And after his home theater got done and we're over at their house, um, uh, taking pictures and tuning the room up and, you know, commissioning it and d- delivering the room. He takes me inside, Sam, this theater has been a game changer for our marriage. We never watched a movie together, but now we have movie night all the time. And we have friends come over dinner, little wine movies. It's part of our social calendar. And it's just been, I had no idea of knowing this. Mm. So how how many people are in that position? They have no idea of knowing what a private cinema can do for them. But with the cinema connoisseur and these cinema stories, the public has a place that they can get this information. It's not being shared now. Yeah. It, there's, there's just not that venue. So we're doing that. We've got several other features and they're all focused that way. And my, my, my editorial right. Go ahead. What, Ryan? I was going to say, it's all, it's all done in like a non, you know, a lot of these things are very like unapproachable things that are out there. It's it's very technical. It's just all about like the equipment or all these things that, you know, like, it's not about like, like the technical specifications of your amplifier or like, which, you know, remote control you want to use or whatever. Like Mm -hmm. this is all very approachable. This is all about the experience. This is all about, you know, really the enjoyment of the private cinema. This is like Mm -hmm. developed in a way that's approachable for people who are not the yeah. technical deep divers, right? Yeah. You know, there's probably going to be a little bit of stuff in there for those people too, but you know, um, this is, is meant to be something that's approachable for regular people. It, Brilliant. You know, it's funny because the people that have read the first issue tell me they're, they're mostly the industry. Cause that's, that's who we, we have context with and they, they have written me and, and I've had a couple of manufacturers even write me and say, how can we help? How can we be part of this? And, you know, and which was really satisfying to get that information. From, and, and, and they've all said, they said, you know, this is really good information. I've never read anything like this before. And, 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 and what really makes me happy because I, I wanted it to be very entertaining and engaging to the ultimate audience, which is the clients that are out there that don't even know they're the clients yet. They're just, they're, they're home theater owners and they don't know it yet. And, yeah. I'm, you know, yay, we're going to get the chance to tell you. But the, I, my philosophy was that the industry and also the trades will be able to read the same material and gain a lot out of it mm-hmm. and maybe gain a level of empathy to help make it possible, more, more approachable to the clients. So mm-hmm. that's my role. That's my job now is, 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 uh, um, you know, preacher Sam standing on the corner with my cinema connoisseur magazine, you know, (laughs) but I just, I just want to share like our friend, the client that I wrote about, it's a shared experience, um, you know, of, of, of enjoying what we do and, and sharing it so more people can enjoy it. That's my, my mission. And, uh, um, I hope it, it, I hope it is good for a lot of people. That's what my, my hope for it is. I love it. Your, 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 your passion and enthusiasm and, and dedication is infectious. Um, I guess my last, my last question is, is about running a family business. And that's, you know, it's, it's a unique and, you know, there's a lot of people who will be listening to this who are in family businesses and lots of design companies where you've got father and son duos. And I've interviewed many in the past and it's not it's not always plain sailing. Um, it can be a very intense environment. You guys are kind of with each other all the time. Um, what are some of the advantages and what are some of the challenges of running a close knit family business? Well, I, I'll, I think if we didn't love what we do so much, it would be very difficult. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, we, we really love what we do. We're super passionate about it and, and we love this business and we love like our team and we just, 
you know, so like taking a family vacation or like, you know, relaxing at Christmas or whatever, we gotta, we actually have to, you know, really be mindful of like, Hey, this is family time. You know, it's important for us to engage as a family. And, and sometimes it's difficult because we do love what we do. Yeah. And so it's like hard to like, you know, we start like, Oh, Hey, did you hear about I this? I want to talk or, you know, about it, <laughs> but, it, but I yeah. don't want to talk about and then, it now. And then, and then like, there it goes. And then we're like, Oh man, we just sat there and talked about business for a half hour, you know, and sometimes we'll get like, you know, kind of the glare from my wife or you know, side eye. my mom. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, uh, come on guys. Um, but yeah, so I think that, you know, that's one aspect to it. And Sam, I mean, you probably have a few. Well, it, it is, it is totally the case. And, and the other thing is, is that we're, we're, we're similar enough personality types that, that, um, and, and our personality types are not, are not docile or um, we're, 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 we're dynamic. And so both of us are dynamic. Both of us have an idea and intend to go get it. And so um, it's just the way we are. And, and um, it, it's, uh, um, but the other side is that there's um, like a, a, a deep respect um, that I have for Ryan. And I know he's, he's got the same for me. And it, it's, it's, it's been, um, amazing uh and 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 so you know not too many people get to do this um you know uh, i actually had a um a colleague in the industry tell me he was quite envious he says you've got somebody to take take what you created into the future and and he says i don't know how i would ever do that mm -hmm. and and i and i I'm really grateful about that. And, and it's, you know, and, and the other, you know, part of that is that I'm so glad that Ryan loves it too. Um, I'm glad it's not a, a business that is something that's just about, you know, how much you can get done and how much money you can make and, you know, check the books and check the, you know, check the scorecard at the bank type of thing. The, the scorecard is in your heart. It's, it's, it's actually, it's a much different than, than that. And, you know, and yeah, we're going to be successful and finance, financial success should and will result from, from our, our business, but that's not the end all be all. And that's actually what makes it hard for us not to talk about it at family vacations. He's going to come out and we're going to go surfing and stuff here in a couple of weeks. And, and uh, you know, when we're out there on the lineup. We'll probably talk about a job. <laughs> and it's going to be okay because, I mean, my gosh, we did do the coolest stuff there is, and 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 uh, and at the same time, you know, be a family. So, um, yeah, it, it's hard, but it's way worth it. Um, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like you know, I think I have like some friends who have businesses with like partners and stuff, and it's like, um, you know, the level of trust we have is guaranteed. It's mm. it's it's not something you think about. It's there. Right. It's like, so like, that's one aspect of running a family business. I think that is, makes it actually like so much easier is that there's this, this like inherent absolute trust and faith At least in our family. There is. Yeah. I, is I, I guess, I, I guess that's right. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> I, maybe we're, we're, well, I should say we are very fortunate in that way. Um, but you know, that does make it really easy. You know, you hear, you hear about these people who like, oh, they get ripped off by their bookkeeper or, you know, there's other things. I mean, and we don't have to worry about that. We can focus on being the best version mm -hmm. of the company that, that we can be. You know? I love it. I think that's the perfect place to conclude the conversation. Sam, Ryan, thank you so much for sharing your story and your insights into the industry and your expertise. It's been a really wonderful um, experience to hear go along that journey with you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So, yeah. Been a long time listener of the podcast. Uh, it's like pretty exciting day for me. Pretty yeah. <laughs> Love it. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Take care. And that's a wrap. And don't forget, if you want to access your free training to learn how to structure your firm or practice for freedom, fulfillment and profit, please visit smartpracticemethod.com. Or if you'd like to speak to one of our advisors directly, follow the link in the information. If you enjoyed today's show, please head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. I read every single one. 
Also, I'd love to get your feedback on this particular episode or the show in general, as well as your recommendations. You can reach us by emailing podcast at businessofarchitecture.com. This podcast is brought to you by Business of Architecture, a leading architect business consultancy. Access our free training on how to structure your architecture firm for more freedom, fulfillment, and financial success by going to smartpracticemethod.com. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, warranty, pledge, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.